Bots, 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 bots. It's a topic that has the Rocket League community up in arms. Robot arms. Basically, there are dumb neckbeards repurposing bots programmed to play Rocket League at a high level and using them to play ranked for them. I didn't really believe this was too common until I was finding no 3v3 games one night of stream and decided to play my 2v2 placements. During those 10 games, I played two games with legitimate bots in them. That's 20% of my 2v2 games that night. Apparently, these bots are more common than I thought. After looking through the replays, my chat and I came up with several key observations that helped us be certain that these players were bots. Here are seven ways to tell if there are bots infiltrating your ranked games. Number one, they genuinely enjoy Rumble. <laughs> ah, just a little joke for you there. But for real, number one, the kickoff, real janky. I didn't notice this in game since it was really late at night, but every single kickoff, the bot did not flip into the kickoff. This is something I see in platinum lobbies or very low ranked lobbies, but this was high champion or GC1. When in the second slot in kickoff, as in when you'd cheat up on the kickoff, the bot would just instead full send into a challenge as if you weren't even there as a teammate on the kickoff. They would just go in and flip at it as if they absolutely had to make that challenge. Number two, the bot will aerial minimally and maybe not even at all. I'm talking almost no wall play, aerials, and really just a limited amount of vertical movement in general. While the bot would jump to flick the ball or to challenge you, it wouldn't ultimately jump and boost into the air that much. Within the entirety of the two bot games I played, I counted maybe one real aerial each bot took and they're both very routine straight line aerials each time. Other than that, the bot stayed on the ground because... Number three, flicks are consistent and the primary form of attacking. The one thing I noticed is that they aren't aerialing because they're waiting for the ball to reach the ground so they can set up a flick. These flicks are incredibly consistent. It's very jarring to watch because otherwise these bots are just flying around the field somewhat aimlessly, not aerialing at all. But what I mean by consistent is that the flicks will always be top shelf or at the crossbar. So very rarely will the bot opt for a direct shot unless it's the only clear option. Number four, ground game is on fleek. Do the kids still say fleek? Well, if they do, the bot catches and reactions are certainly fleek-ish or fleek-like. The bots used a lot of diagonal backflip flicks, and particularly when challenged, the bots always flicked the ball as soon as challenged, and the timing was really incredible. For me, these moments stood out because a previously passive bot, which tended to rotate very safely, would suddenly become Lionel Messi on the ball with instant reactions, which is strange because the reactions don't always kick in because... Number five, demo avoidance or minimal attention paid to the physical game. The bots avoided bumping like it was the plague. These bots were 100% concerned with boost pathing and trying to catch the ball. They could not care about other people. But what made this clear to me was in my second game of playing a bot, the teammate of the bot abandoned. I gotta get out of here! And my teammate and I were forced to waste down the remaining time as the bot would not forfeit. Come on, man! Thinking at the time that this was just someone who wouldn't give up, I began trying to chain demos, as in demo them, and then try to predict which corner they would spawn in and continue to try to keep them demoed to frustrate them and eventually get them to leave. I was highly successful at this, as every time I was driving at the bot, there was more than enough time to react. The bot would just act like there was no danger and move based on the defensive rotation back to goal and not the actual demo threat right in front of its robot eyes or sensors or infrared terminator vision. Number six, they are always on ball cam. Now, this point was only discovered because once I saved the replay files and went back to watch the bot's point of view, this feels like one of the most damning points in the list. The bots just had ball cam permanently on, which any relatively high level player can tell you is incredibly weird because a player who emphasizes and excels at ground play needs a clear camera that isn't flying all around so they can set up their proper flicks. And finally, number seven, micro adjustments when positioning. Again, when you're looking at the replay files, one thing that will really strike you is when setting up those near perfect flicks on goal we mentioned earlier, the bot POV jitters a bit, as if you would do if there were micro movements of accelerating and braking to keep the ball in the perfect spot for a deadly flick. While humans can do this on a dribble and be really consistent on the flicks, it tends to be more organic and fluid and more based around timing and less constant adjustments of speed braking and accelerating that only a robot could do. So what does this all mean? How scared should you be of bots and ranked? While these are only two bots I played against, my judgment is that these bots will be fairly difficult for you to play against if you are below champion three, but ultimately just do not have the ability to truly contest against higher C3, Grand Champ, or Supersonic Legend players. Yet.